I'm like, I made the album so it could get synced for movies. Okay. So I had got... You made it with that in mind? Yeah, every single one. And almost, I think like probably 80% of those songs got synced. So the reason I made it because <clears throat> we had got an offer to do... Um, was it, it was, the, was it the Army or was it FIFA? What was first? FIFA, right? Uh, it was uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty gave me an offer. How much was it? Like, crazy. <laughs> Basically, Call of Duty gave me... It was a big checks. They, 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 but like Call of Duty, Call of, Call of Duty gave me to do one song that they didn't even use was more than my whole album budget. Okay, but let, let, let's be let's be let's be um, precise if we can. Mm -hmm. But you do you get publishing off of that, or this is a buyout? <clears throat> no, you get publishing too. Oh, you get publishing too. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Call of Duty. They license it. It's yeah, they, no, that's the thing. Huh? No, but some they, people can no, do a yeah, buyout. No, you can do a buyout, yeah. but they 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 didn't even use it. So right. I still got paid, and they didn't use it. Right. I got a FIFA thing. Oh, and they didn't use it. Okay, I got okay. a FIFA thing for Champions League. Uh, and that was crazy. Mm. And then I was like, all right. FIFA money different. That's soccer. I was like, this yeah. makes sense. So then years later, I Only <laughs> so when, when Call of Duty didn't use it, mm. um, the U.S. Army picked it up. The I got, Army picked it up? I got paid for it again. They wow. didn't use it. Then after the Army didn't use it, the Spider-Man movie used it. So wow. this is all the meantime I'm making this album. And I'm torn. I'm like, all right. So if I can get 10 songs, every one of these songs can get synced. Right. Then I don't need nothing else. You feel me? Right. So then I made this song called Back Back. I made it for Baywatch. Right. They put it in the Baywatch trailer. And I noticed that the, like certain B-A-K, B-A-K. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what's it called? Um, no, so I make I make Back Back, right? Uh -huh. And we go, the OA. This was a show called the OA, this director. And like uh -huh. the, it was, a you know, the music director kept putting my shit in certain shit. So I, was, I noticed like what songs kept getting synced. Blue Sway kept getting synced. And some of North North got synced. And I noticed it was like, it was like they was going for the most abrupt sounds okay. for, to, to kind of separate the scenes. So then I started making music with that in mind. So Back Back got, um, I got Back Back in Baywatch, Black Panther, and like one other thing. Mm. And then a lot of them other songs were getting synced. So basically I was, that changed my whole life. I love that video right there. That's pure strategy. I love how Vince Staples, uh, you know what I'm saying, like thinks about what, what he's doing and how he analyzed the whole situation uh, with his prior uh, ability to get sing licensing on particular songs. And look, you know, he found a niche uh, in the market that allowed him to basically make a lot of money from songs that could, if they're synced for the next 30, 40 years, he'd be making way more money than artists just trying to make big hits uh, to make sure they get streamed on Spotify, you know, Apple Music and things like that. So I want to break that strategy down a little bit more. Um, and let's get into it, but I love that approach. I just, I just love that because it just shows there's just so many different ways of making money uh, in the music industry, and it's not always uh, that one way that you see every A-list artist doing or most A-list artists doing. So let's break that down. What's going on, guys? My name is Matei. Another day from Music Biz Daily. If you wait till the end of the video, I'll tell you what I got going on this month and how me and my team can help you. But let me stay on this topic of sync licensing and specifically how you know, Vince Staples was able to um, really figure out a, a, a demand in the marketplace or like, you know, like a niche market that he could make songs for, right? So he talks about after he got a placement off of FIFA, he realized what type of publishing money and probably upfront licensing fee, uh, those type of deals pay. So he literally went ahead and strategically made an album. And, and he thought about it. I mean, you, you could see his thought process, how he, you know, made a song for Baywatch. And then he made a song for an, another theme or another movie. And he made an entire album with the intention that he was going to create songs with certain vibes or topics that he believed could get an easier time of getting sync. Now, you know, again, a lot of independent artists trying to start with a strategy just because you have something in mind and you make it, you also got to have the relationships because to get stuff synced um, is not that easy, actually. You got to either have the relationship in the industry, you got to be able to, you know, know the people at like Netflix or these big distribution uh, platforms, like invite-only distribution platforms that have the ability to call Netflix or Hulu or uh, AA Sports or, you know, Rockstar Games, which is the uh, company that made... Uh, Grand Theft Auto and just you know be able to get to the right people to get these songs on their radar but there are you know certain situations that I'll talk about that also can get your song plays without you intentionally doing it my man Ben tell me if you guys yeah, saw a couple months ago I went to Brooklyn I interviewed I did a you know quick video with him I went to visit him in the studio we caught up after a few years 
Um, but you know, he had a song that uh, back in 2016, which it was much easier to get your songs on New Music Friday. He basically, you know, he sort of got lucky. He talks about that it was, you know, luck in this case, but it was a really good song and got picked by New Music Friday. Ended up on that playlist. And what happens is these, um, you know, directors of like, whatever their position title is, that decide, the curators that decide what type of sounds or music or background music or background production goes into commercials, movies, sitcoms, and things like that. They heard that song on the New Music Friday. They placed his song into a Microsoft commercial for one of their new uh, like tablets. This is back in like 2017 and 2018, I believe. And he's still getting checks from that to this day, you know? And yes, the song has like a couple million uh, streams at this point um, on you know Spotify and probably Apple Music. So let's say he made another you know 15 to 20,000 off of that. But the, the checks from the uh, publishing and the sing licensing just being on the commercial um, surpassed that revenue for sure. I have another friend of mine who's been in the industry, you know, for almost a decade. He first started out in the band, then he started out in, um, he was like a, in an EDM producer band. Uh, long story short, he made a lot of connections in the industry. And again, he figured out how he was able to make relationships with certain curators or people in position that decide uh, what type of background production they need for commercials, sitcoms, and things like that. And that's a sole job, that's all he does. You know what I'm saying? He probably works 20, 25 hours uh, a week at this point, just in his home studio, creates whatever needs to be created for these different jobs. Sometimes those tracks are bought out right from him. Sometimes he gets publishing on them, makes a super healthy salary. I'm not talking millions a year or anything like that, but you know, maybe around 300, yeah, he doesn't share his finances with me. But the point I'm trying to make, you can make a lot of different money in this industry if you approach it from different angles. And clearly Vince Staples has figured out that not only am I already a known artist and I'm going to get some streaming money and all of that, but if I could just like specifically focus on the strategy and make songs that could get sing because the vibe fits, it, the, the lyrics fit, all that fits, and he already had a few placements so his manager can kind of go back and based on that relationship can say, hey, do you know somebody at such and such network that is looking for X, Y, and Z? And it's a great strategy for him, you know? And like... Uh, Vince Staples, I'm a fan of him, but like you know, he's not like an A-list artist where everybody knows about him. But this man may even be making more money himself on his own or independently, you know, with his team, obviously, more than some A-list artists under uh, label contracts. And trust me, labels always try to go after sing licensing. So I don't want to make this video too long. Big ups to uh, Vince Staples. Just it, it's a great strategy. I love the way he approached it. Another example of that, if you understand the business and you're in the business, you're not just worried about being in the studio in the booth making the songs and then doing whatever the hell you think A-list artists are doing. But if you are strategic, you make the relationships, put a little bit of thought process behind it, you understand the business, you understand the numbers, all that together create a great, healthy financial situation for any artist. But it's just, you know, you can't give up, you gotta keep going, your music's gotta be good, of course, you gotta make the networks, network is key. You know, when they say network is your net worth, there's a lot of truth to it. Don't just take that statement alone and say, oh, I know a ton of people, I'm gonna blow up. That's also not the only thing. You gotta have all these things working in you know, parallel correctly. Having a decent network, understanding how to do marketing properly, understanding how to do business, understanding how to do physical marketing properly. All that will come with time, you know? But if you wanna find out more about those type of strategies, definitely join the NDRs Accelerator, which brings me to the end of the video. If you wanna know how me and my team can help you, follow me on Instagram, hit the link in the bio. When you hit the link in the bio, like I said, specifically look at our Indies Artists Accelerator, because we have strategies like this. The example of my buddy that makes, you know, place, I mean, music for just commercial placements. I talked about that. We did a case study on him at the Accelerator. A lot of great stuff. We had lawyers come through, talk about, you know, certain approaches on how to get into this. So make sure you check that out. Check me out weekly on Clinton Sparks um, and his show on Monday nights. We had a great one uh, yesterday. A lot of great topics we discussed, great guests that he had on. Um, I'm gonna be in Atlanta, August 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So look out for that. Um, and then next month, we got an accountant coming in the Accelerator to teach you guys, the members in the Accelerator, on how to properly you know, do your finances, taxes, and all that good stuff. And also, if you're watching me on YouTube, thank you guys for your support. Continue to support my channel. Like the video, dislike it, give me some you know, feedback, I don't care. Um, and let me know if you want me to do a video on another topic. If you do so, make sure you subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit that notification icon. 
Also hit that notification icon on Instagram so that way you know when I drop a new video so you can just continue to learn more stuff for free. You don't even gotta be a member of not on my, you know, uh, in the Artist Accelerator or you don't have to hire us. It's just information continues to come. So thanks guys and I'll see you tomorrow for another day of Music Biz Daily. Peace. <laughs>